What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna start breaking down my Revit to 3ds Max workflow that lets me design at the same time as I'm setting up awesome renderings. The big overarching idea is that you want to set up your building geometry in Revit and your materials, lightings, and plantings in 3ds Max. You know all the little stuff that breathes life into your design. 3ds Max is great for that type of stuff. It's actually a really great modeling program. It's just a bit of a dead end for architects as any cool stuff you make there isn't gonna make its way back into your construction documents. So essentially this whole workflow is really about understanding what the strengths of both programs are and using your time most efficiently so that you're not doubling up on extra work. But that's it. Do your building modeling in Revit, do the pretty stuff in 3ds Max. So let's go over some best practices for Revit to make your life easier in 3ds Max. Nothing that I'm going to be doing here is that complicated or unusual, but if there's anything really specific that you want me to dial in on and do a separate video on, let me know and I can do that. I'm also going to show you a couple 3ds Max clips so you understand why what I'm doing in Revit is important. Don't panic, I will go in much more depth than that in the upcoming videos. Just watch, try to take in what I'm doing and understand the big picture about how the programs are interacting with each other. Let's dive in. Number one, get your material library organized. In particular, you want to pay attention to the names of the materials you're using in your families. This is essentially the backbone of the entire workflow. When you bring your model into Max, you'll have the option to combine the geometry by material name. Any materials that share the same name will get combined into a single entity in Max. This is an awesome feature because it means you can start your Max file with a clean, already grouped model. It will streamline the setup work so you'll only have to apply a handful of materials to get your Revit geometry looking sharp instead of having to meticulously apply materials to every single object individually. For example, in this model, the doors and windows share the same aluminum and glass material. The aluminum material is also on the trellis strip edge, the metal siding, the chimney cap. In Max, you can see all these different material elements are already grouped, so I only have to apply metal to one object instead of all of them individually. The catch is that you have to be diligent with your material standards in Revit. I recommend coming up with naming conventions and a prefix that you'll use with all of your materials. Apply these materials to all of your Revit families across all of your projects and all of your templates. In my library, I have this STKD prefix that lets me quickly pull up the materials of set and apply as needed so I know that I'm always using the same concrete, the same glass, the same metal, which will make my life much easier in Max. Best of all is that most rendering programs will work the same way, so this is just a good idea regardless of if you're using 3ds Max and V-Ray, or Corona, or Lumion, or Twinmotion. If you're in a firm with a lot of people, it's also probably just good to have a material naming convention regardless. It's just a good idea, just do it. The second thing you want to do in Revit is set up certain families so that you can scatter on them. In Max, you're going to use a plugin called Forest Pack to scatter thousands of geometry across the surface for site elements like grass or gravel with a single click of a button. The plugin works best when you're scattering on a single plane, not a solid 3D piece of geometry. That means Revit topo surfaces will be totally ready to be scattered on by default. Sometimes I also like to make planter or lawns as floors and pads since they are a bit easier to adjust than topos. The trick to making this work is to go into the floor or pad structure and set the finish on the very top to something different than the core layer. When it imports, that top piece will come in as a single plane all ready for you to scatter on it. Number three, save your 3D views. The last tip I give you is to save the view that you want to export as a distinct export view. I'll often hide certain elements such as furniture that either don't look good or will be replaced with something better in Max. Saving this as a view means every time I'm ready to update the Max model with the new building design, I'll have all the same settings saved. I also will sometimes split the site context geometry and the building geometry into views so I can export them individually. This is super useful as you can set the context up independently of the building design. I'll often do the context first and then continually relink the design as it develops. It's also great for working in a team because one person can be setting up the context while somebody else is working on the design. Just makes it a bit easier than relinking the whole model every time you want to change the design. And that's it. In the 3D view you created, just go to export FBX and save out each view you've set up and you're on your way to 3ds Max. When you change the design, just re-export and save over the first file and you'll be able to relink that file in Max without losing any of your materials, lights, or other things you've set up. 
I don't think any of that's really that difficult as far as Revit goes. It might take a little bit of time up front, but once you set your company template up with consistently named materials across all of your families, throw in a couple planters for scattering, you're really not gonna have to revisit the first two tips. Otherwise, just model and Revit exactly as you normally would, and you should have a pretty smooth time in Max. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions on anything. The next video is gonna take a deeper dive into 3ds Max. We're gonna take a look at some of the relevant settings and features that you need to be aware of. We're gonna go over linking that FBX in and starting to set up some shots. So definitely subscribe to be notified when that video is gonna drop. You can also get a hold of me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day.